Beneath the quiet facade of Oshawa, Ontario, a routine plumber's call unearthed a bone-chilling enigma. Communications, I'm a plumber, and we're on site for a job. We've been pulling back, flesh like stuff, meat. The words, innocently spoken, set off a chain reaction of dread. What started as a simple drain clearing job soon spiraled into a dark and gripping mystery, captivating the entire town in its sinister embrace. As the details emerged, a bizarre reality unfolded. Perverted acts ending the lives of two innocent teenagers, Rory Ha and Candace Fitzpatrick. This is the story of Rory Hache. On July 9, 1999, a spark ignited in the small suburb of Oshawa, Ontario, as Rory Hache entered the world. She danced through life along the shores of Lake Ontario, where the waves echoed her vibrant spirit. She had a knack for rap beats, loved assisting the elderly and embracing furry friends. Rory's generosity was a legend. She was known for happily sharing her lunch with her friends in school. In the cadet uniform, Rory shone even brighter, receiving the Cadet of the Year title not once, but twice, proving that intelligence and charisma were woven into her very fabric. However, a puzzling shift emerged after her consecutive victories as Cadet of the Year. The once promising path veered into darkness. Everything was smooth until Rory's first week of high school, marking an unfortunate descent into the wrong crowd. Rory's life took a dark turn when someone offered her meth, starting a rough journey. Addiction took hold quickly, and shame became her constant companion. Born into a biker legacy, Rory's family background started taking a toll on her personality. Her grandfather founded the notorious Satan's Choice Motorcycle Club, and an uncle was actively involved in the Hells Angels. But Rory's story took a surprising turn, a testament to the strength she found in her support system, her family. With their help, she bravely fought her demons, emerging victorious in her battle for sobriety. Six months of hard-fought clean living followed, backed by a supportive guidance counselor, a steady job, a return to education, a loving boyfriend, and the pride of renting her own place at the age of 17. Rory was on a roll, her life back on track. However, tragedy struck in August 2017 when Rory found herself in the hospital nursing injuries sustained from an accidental house fire. It was during this vulnerable time that Rory mysteriously vanished from the waiting room. As days rolled by, Rory's absence started drawing attention, leading to a full-blown alarm being raised by her family and community. Two days after the discovery of a torso in Ashawa Harbor, Questions emerged about Rory's possible pregnancy. However, it was too early to distinguish any signs from the torso. Two agonizing months passed before Rory's family provided her DNA for comparison, confirming on November 10, 2017, that the torso belonged to Rory Hutch. Then, on December 29, 2017, a plumber responding to a call about clogged pipes stumbled upon a horrifying discovery in Adam Strong's basement suite. As the police arrived, Adam confessed, leading to the chilling revelation of Rory's body in his freezer. The discovery sent shockwaves through the town, unraveling a tale of horror and tragedy. In a chilling twist of events, the investigation into Rory's tragic demise uncovered a macabre scene that defied all logic. Rory's blood-soaked shoes were found stuffed in a plastic bag, while bloodstains painted every inch of Adam's suite from floor to ceiling. A harrowing dive into his online history revealed a disturbing fascination with gore sites depicting death and dismemberment. Even more shockingly, an undetonated pipe bomb was discovered, hinting at Adam's sinister intentions. The bomb squad was hastily summoned, averting potential disaster with a controlled detonation captured by frenzied news reporters. As the truth unraveled, Adam Strong's life transformed from enigmatic to a theater of horrors leaving all involved grappling with the evil lurking within those walls. After an exhaustive 25-day investigation, the forensic team wrapped up their search, only for the rental unit to be shockingly listed again within a month. Tear it down, demanded Rory's grieving family, standing in front of the house on McMillan Drive. For them, this building was a haunting reminder of their daughter's gruesome fate, representing anguish and nightmares they couldn't escape. Rory's autopsy painted a grim picture, fractures and facial injuries inflicted before her death, her body methodically dismembered, likely flushed down the toilet. 
The cause of death remained a mystery, shrouded by her body's state. And who was Adam Strong? His troubled past revealed a dark narrative, blaming his crimes on a tumultuous childhood. Confessions of a young boy with tendencies akin to a serial killer, harboring a disturbing urge to torture animals. Behind the facade of a gas station attendant at 46 lurked a man with a chilling history of violence, begging the haunting question, what drives a person to commit such unspeakable horrors? In his interactions with officers, Adam didn't reveal any names, maintaining a facade of self-assuredness, even though he wasn't as intelligent as he portrayed himself to be. As fate would have it, it was Detective Darren Short on duty that day, and he took charge of the interview. Detective Short, at that moment, had no idea he was facing the killer of Rory. The likelihood was there, but without concrete evidence, it remained just another case to be handled. During the interview, Detective Short received a notification about what they discovered in the freezer. It was then he realized Adam Strong was the one he had been looking for. By now, Rory was identified by her tattoo. Armed with this information, Detective Short's approach was direct. He confronted Adam, forcing him to face the harsh reality of his actions. At that point, a lack of crucial information surrounded the circumstances of Rory's death. To press murder charges, it was crucial to have solid evidence confirming her death as a homicide. But the specific cause of her death remained vague. It was apparent that Adam was in no mood to cooperate. The only hope that remained was the plethora of blood-soaked evidence that could pin down the murder on him. Detective Short sifted through the evidence meticulously, each piece a potential link in the chain leading to justice. Among them, a menacing Wyoming knife stood out, its gleaming edge hinting at a grim tale. The hope was simple. Find Rory's DNA and Adam's fate would be sealed. Days turned into weeks, anticipation mounting with each passing moment. Then, finally, the forensic report arrived, promising a resolution. Yet, as Detective Short poured over its contents, a chilling realization set in. It wasn't Rory's DNA that stared back at him from the page. In a twist, both unsettling and tragic, the evidence pointed to a second victim, Candace Fitzpatrick, a teenager who vanished a decade ago. Her DNA, like a ghost from the past, emerged from the shadows, implicating Adam in a crime far more sinister than imagined. With newfound urgency, authorities pieced together the puzzle, their pursuit of justice unyielding. Yet amidst the certainty of Adam's guilt, one question loomed large. Where was Candace, and what dark secrets lay buried with her? On July 10th, 2018, they learned that the DNA belonged to Candace Fitzpatrick, an 18-year-old female who had gone missing almost a decade earlier, in March of 2008. This is a new name in this investigation. Police, as you just mentioned, told us today that she was last seen by her family in 2008. She was known to frequent the central Oshawa area, as was Rory Hay, the other name. Who Candace, like Rory, hailed from the Oshawa area and struggled with drug addiction. Described by her dad as having a big heart and love for everyone, Candace was last seen leaving home for the mall in March 2008. However, her disappearance was only reported two years later. Her transient lifestyle meant her brief absences didn't immediately raise alarms. But as months passed without contact, her father's concern grew. The uncanny resemblances in the life stories and physical features of both women are striking, as Candace was officially reported missing in 2010, two years after she actually went missing. This delay made the task of finding her much more challenging. Her father dedicated years to searching for her, but hope gradually faded. Unfortunately, a decade later, his grimmest fears manifested in Adam's apartment on November 8, 2018. Adam Strong was brought in from prison for his second police interview. Detective Short observed this 11-hour interrogation orchestrated by Detective Paul Mitten unfolding live from another room. Right from the start, it was evident that Adam wasn't scared or stressed. Instead, he appeared remarkably upbeat and chatty. It's as though he holds all the cards, feels an upper hand, and takes pride in it, enjoying the spotlight that now shines upon him. After his demands are met, he finally acknowledges knowing Rory as he begins to open up. There's an obvious caution in his admissions, a careful dance between revealing certain details and withholding others. It's a calculated approach, as if he's strategically navigating the narrative to suit his own motives. Detective Paul Mitten tirelessly probed for answers, 
working to piece together the timeline from the discovery of Rory's torso on September 11th to the crucial call from the plumber in late December. Two years later, we find ourselves at the trial. But despite Adam's clear admission to dismembering his victims, he surprisingly pled not guilty to the two counts of first-degree murder. His defense attorney floated the theory that the girls may have overdosed, and Adam panicked. However, Rory's head injuries told a different story. During the trial, the defense attempted to challenge the admissibility of Adam's initial admissions to the police, claiming a lack of access to legal counsel. On March 16, 2021, Adam Strong was found guilty of first-degree murder for Rory H. and the manslaughter of Candace Fitzpatrick. As Candace's remains were never found, the court couldn't prove her murder beyond a reasonable doubt. Despite this, Adam was sentenced on May 27, 2021 to life imprisonment with no possibility of parole for 25 years. Finally, justice was served for the heinous crimes he committed, the cries of victory from those closest to Rory Hay and Candace Fitzpatrick, after learning Adam Strong guilty of first-degree murder and manslaughter, is now going away to prison for good. As the gavel fell, Rory Hay, Candace Fitzpatrick, and their grieving families finally found closure. The judge stressed that there was no hope for rehabilitation for Adam, and firmly stated that he would spend the rest of his life behind bars. Speaking directly to Strong, the justice said, You are a dangerous predator. Just a month after being imprisoned, Adam finally realized that he would rot in his cell forever. He realized that he held no bargaining chip whatsoever that could shorten his sentence. After some rounds of questioning, the investigators managed to get hold of Adam Strong in judicial custody. I can confirm today that the remains found last November are those of Candace Fitzpatrick. As the curtain falls on the haunting saga of Rory Hay and Candace Fitzpatrick, one cannot help but ponder the depths of darkness still concealed within the seemingly ordinary walls of a bona fide horror house. Chilling questions still unanswered, were there more victims whose stories may never surface? What if the plumber was never called? Why did he skin his victims? The mysteries persist, the untold stories that may forever remain in the shadows. Join us by subscribing to True Crime Stories, where we give voice to yesterday's victims, paving the way to shield the victims of tomorrow. Together, let's turn the echoes of tragedy into a resounding call for awareness and change.